Hi everyone, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 27th of May. Hope you all had a great week and uh, looking forward to the week ahead and uh, if you like the videos I provide every week, please don't forget to press that like button, subscribe as well as share the content on your social media platforms with your fellow trading colleagues. So uh, getting into the week ahead. And this is from tradingeconomics.com. So in the US, investors will be closely monitoring PCE prices index, personal income and spending, and speeches from or by several Fed officials. Also, the focus will be on the second estimate of Q1 GDP growth. Uh, globally, attention will be on inflation rates for Germany, the Euro area, and Australia. GDP growth rates will be released for Switzerland and Canada. Unemployment rates will be reported for the euro area also key indicators to watch include china's nbs manufacturing and services pmi finally in japan the focus will be on governor ueda's opening remarks at a conference hosted by the bank of japan alongside releases of data for consumer confidence the tokyo cpi retail sales unemployment rate and industrial production so lots going on in japan and also, I think that really the standout um, will be uh, any GDP or C and, and uh, CPI news. So, um, you know, you're looking at uh, the US, uh, Australia and Canada as well. So lots going on this week. And um, and so, uh, yeah, getting into the analysis and just really starting off on a trade that I've taken this week on the euro Australian dollar. So this is this week's uh, uh, trade analysis and the new trade that I've entered into. Um, at the moment, it is a profitable trade or at least break even. And I'll break it down. So fundamentally, um, I wanted to be uh, short on the euro against the Australian dollar. Main reason was because the Australian dollar are uh, cutting rates uh, later than most other central banks and cutting rates is an attempt by central banks to actually devalue the currency so uh, the euro area are looking to cut rates in june and the australian dollar not until probably the end of the year so there's a you know a bit of a lag in terms of uh, rate cuts so um for me euro uh, is a short against the uh, the australian dollar so over the uh, Friday, uh, the guys in the group, in the private mentoring group, we saw this level uh, occur, especially on an intraday time frame. It's in a daily supply zone, but um, we also saw this level here, which was a bit of a stop hunt. So uh, we were looking at going short in and around here. Now, there was multiple ways to go short around here. And uh, I took one of probably the most aggressive uh, way to go short on here. And it was really uh, on an eight hour time frame. So I didn't necessarily wait for the stop hunt to occur. I entered on the close of this bullish candle. Now, there was a divergence on this candle uh, with an indicator that I do use. Um, uh, and it gave me a, a nice uh, entry um uh, a nice entry signal here i think the, uh, i think my stop loss was around 20 i think it was maybe about 25 pips something like that yeah i think it was about 25 pips and so managed to get involved here and enter into two positions and uh, one of my positions ended up making a nice one-to-one -one on late Friday afternoon. And so now I'm just uh, looking to uh, uh, swing trades the other position to the lows. Now, uh, what would determine whether prices move to the lows is going to be this week's uh, CPI data for the Australian dollar. And if inflation does come out higher than expected, right then you should get uh this happen with the uh with the euro aussie the australian dollar should strengthen yeah but if inflation comes in uh lower than forecast right lower than forecast 
then you're likely to actually get this move to the upside, right? As in the, the Australian dollar is likely to weaken. So at the moment, nobody knows, right? No one knows what is going to happen. You know, we enter on the technicals and then um, hope that the fundamentals, uh, you know, go in, continue to go in our favor, right? So we're looking for bargain prices. This was seen as a bargain price as prices move to the downside. Prices, you know, came back to this area here. Is this a bargain price? Who knows? But if it does continue to move to the downside, then, uh, you know, that's where my final targets are roughly around going to be at the bottom of the uh, of this range. So around 80 percent of the area. So where this green line is, the one, six, two, five, ones is what I'm looking for. But I just need some help with the fundamentals. And if they do come out in my favor, then brilliant. If not, Right. If not, then I'll just exit the trade. Right. And uh, hopefully just keep the uh, the profits that I've already made as my high, as my stop loss is actually quite high up. I might trail it down just before the news um, comes in as well. Just to see what happens, because um, I'm not going to be awake when that news uh, comes in. So I'll probably tighten up my stop just before the news and then hope that it goes in my direction when I wake up in the morning. Right. So that's really the trade that I'm in. Um, I'm still in uh, some other trades like the Euro, um, sorry, the uh, uh, the dollar Swiss haven't quite taken profit on that. And the euro dollar uh, or final profits, I should say, on that on that dollar Swiss because uh, I did take uh, some profit off and move my stop up. And also as well, uh, in a little bit of profit on the euro dollar as well. So let's see uh, what happens with those. And I'll go over those uh, trades um, and remind you guys because I did go over it last uh, in the last week's video. But I'll go over it as I do the analysis on the pairs. So uh, let's see how this one plays out. Um, now moving on to the analysis for the week and starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index is an equally weighted dollar index moving back to the daily and so um the dollar this week uh fundamentally actually had some uh some decent uh news so united states and um uh, bond traders uh, who are definitely to be watched are once again growing doubtful that the Federal Reserve will deliver two interest rate cuts that were priced into the swaps curve just last week. And uh, traders are staying cautious as they await more data to confirm inflation is heading in the right direction, as well as fresh clues on the US central bank's policy path from the latest minutes from the uh, Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, meeting expected on Wednesday. And actually Wednesday, they ended up being uh, quite hawkish. So um, that ended up driving the, uh, the dollar uh, higher also as well. If we go to the uh, CME FedWatch tool, September, um, a hold was priced into the market. So last week, a week ago on the 17th of May, there was a 35% chance of a, uh, a hold and a 49% chance of a cut. Um, and as the week has gone on, in fact, the, uh, the chances of a hold has increased, which has uh, supported the dollar because uh, obviously cuts uh, um, are aimed at uh, devaluing the currency. But uh, uh, if you the longer central banks hold is the more it supports the currency. So um, so again, that obviously aligns with uh, the bond traders being a bit more cautious. But this week we do have the PCE coming out. PC, PCE is the... Um, is a measure of inflation that the Federal Reserve do look at. So again, if that comes in higher than expected or maybe a bit sticky or stubborn, um, that may delay rate cuts even more in September, which will then mean the dollar is continuing to be a buy. But all eyes will be on the um, on the uh, on the inflation end this week. So uh, buying the dollar at the moment, we still are you know we don't want to really really buy at highs so if you are looking to buy the dollar it's best to kind of make for some sort of pullback at least if you can get that confluence before looking at going higher if you if obviously inflation does come in um uh lower than ex than forecast you're likely to see in fact the dollar you know dramatically sell off i think and maybe come down into these lows or possibly these uh these yearly lows so year to date lows actually year to date lows are all the way down here so we could actually still sell off maybe around here as the September gets priced in. But I don't think the dollar is an all-out sell just yet. 
as they are a cutting uh, later than a lot of central banks and B, uh, they're not looking to cut as much as some other central banks. So let's see what happens with the dollar. So I'm, I'm, I'm still um, slightly more bullish on the dollar currently, but if um, PCE comes out and inflation comes out lower than expected, then I will change my bias and let's take uh, advantage of any kind of short term uh, devaluation of the dollar. Um, looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen um again another week where we've just made higher highs the main um reason for that is uh that we have uh, higher interest rates in the US and the uh, bank of japan although they've hiked rates um there's a wide gap between the interest rate differentials so the federal reserve currently i think their interest rate is at 5.5% whereas the bank of Japan are at uh, 0.1% and so or 0% I think or 0.1% but anyway either way it's very very low so that hasn't really enticed traders to to buy the yen at the moment and so that's what's known as the carry the difference between 5.5 and uh, 0 0% 0.1% um it's not enough to entice uh, buyers so by uh, traders would still investors would still rather buy the uh, the dollar which is the reason why you're seeing uh, this continue higher now this is really where we've got the first demand zone and so if you do want to be a buyer of the um uh, continue to be a buyer of the uh, dollar yen i think a pullback down into this zone right here is decent you've got a nice area or decent area of confirmation as well with support there some support there as well and that would have been some support as prices actually uh, did something like this so you've got moved to the upside and then you've got prices actually bounce off that level before moving to the downside and then it's bounced off again so that level there is decent for a uh, if, you, if prices do come back down here and you still want to be a buyer of the the us dollar that is a decent area to look for a long trade um, of course, you could take advantage of shorts uh, on this pair if the data comes out on, um, when is it, uh, May the 30th, which is uh, the Thursday, which is GDP growth rate, but the inflation data, I think it might, the inflation data might be Tuesday, it doesn't show it on here, I think it might be the Tuesday, it might be, it might be the Friday, I have to see, but, um, but yeah, take advantage of maybe some sort of uh, dollar uh, news that goes against it, right, so those are really your options. Uh, dollar Swiss. So dollar Swiss. A uh, couple of weeks ago, we ended up getting in long around here on a stop hunt, and uh, my final target was actually at eighty percent of this area. So it was right here. Uh, prices came up close. So we're probably around what's that? About twenty pips away, eighteen pips away. Kind of hasn't um moved and uh, touched that profit target yet. I have moved my stop up to uh, to here. So that's where my stop loss is. And I might um, move it a bit tighter, uh, maybe somewhere around here uh, as we head into uh, the dollar news. So let's see what happens. But uh, I haven't taken profit on this, the rest of the profit yet. So I've taken some of the profit off here. I'm going to take the rest of the profit off maybe when it reaches here. If it comes closer to it, I might just uh, take it off anyway. But going forwards, the dollar should still really be the buy against the uh, Swiss franc. The Swiss National Bank is still cutting rates. So you're really looking at a pull back down into any of these demand, well, any of these demand zones, but this demand zone here before looking at a long trade. The lower, the better, of course, because uh, again, I don't see... Um, really the Swiss franc strengthening against the US dollar, dollar anytime soon or significantly. Remember that, or if you're not aware, that prices move in ranges, they move in auctions, right? An auction is a range, right? So ultimately, this has been expensive for the uh, for the exchange rate, and this is seen as a bargain price. So even if prices do come down, it doesn't mean that you know the, the Swiss franc is 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 the stronger out of the two. Um, although you could look at it like that, but the way I look at it is that um, it's just coming down to another bargain area, right? This was a bargain. This was a bargain, and now if prices come back down here. This is going to be where the bargain prices are. So. Um, Again, that's really what I'm looking for on the dollar Swiss, the dollar CAD. So the dollar CAD, um, 
uh, has sold off from this lower high, lower low. I was saying last week uh, that you've got several options like this and then a pullback really up into this lower high if you did want to be a sh uh, go short on this personally i'm looking for long trades and i know um, some of the guys in the group also were long this week and uh, took profit up here so well done to those for taking uh, at least some profit off the table if not all the profits now again this week being a pivotal week we're getting a bit of a pullback but i do think that could be a nice buy if not then you're looking at really down here now again we've got um canadian dollar news the bank of canada um depending on what happens with um i think gdp you could see the bank of canada um uh, cut rates in july rather than june and if that is the case then um in fact the uh, canadian dollar should strengthen but overall i do want to be more bullish i am more bullish on the uh, uh dollar cad and looking for more long trades as again overall the bank of canada should be cutting before the federal reserve pound dollar so the pound dollar um last week <clears throat> we did have um uh, uh, some news out for the uh, for the pound which uh, was inflation and so inflation i think it was here yeah inflation rate came in uh higher than forecast which actually then uh supported the uh the pound and um, it took kind of rate cuts off the table when it came to, um, uh, yeah, the, the the Bank of England. Um, and now uh, uh, rate cuts are looking like August. And so a pushback in rate cut expectations is normally bullish for a currency. And so it says here that the pound's peer beating rally received another boost this week as the interest rate cut by the Bank of England next month became virtually unthinkable to traders. Sterling is poised for its best month since November, extending its outperformance among major uh, counterparts this year on the view that borrowing costs will stay higher for longer to cool inflation. And this is now with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak calling for a general election on July the 4th. What little risk remained of a cut before has all but vanished. So it does look like the, um, uh, the rate cuts are not really coming anytime soon. Of course, there has been now a, a, a surprise election by Rishi Sunak, which will affect the pound in some way, shape or form in terms of volatility. But overall fundamental direction of the pound uh, in terms of rate cuts in August should really still be to the upside in terms of uh, more bullish and more appreciative of the currency. So um, against the dollar, I don't think, you know, there's going to be much, um, it's more of a difficult um, trade to uh, to take because you really want to look for clearer divergences. But um, if you are, if you do want to be a buyer of the pound dollar, then you're looking at that demand zone and you also got a demand zone down here to look for if you are looking at sales then you're looking at probably right now would be the uh the the the, the trade to take um and you've also got actually a decent level of uh support and resistance as confluence within that wider area of demand so you've got sorry of supply so you've got level 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 and a little bit of support Port there resistance there so there's some decent areas to look for shorts if you want to look for shorts right now just slightly higher into the supply zone there uh, but not really a pair that i'm looking to trade pound yen uh, again the uh the pound really just going making higher highs and it makes all the sense in the world because again the difference in um interest rates and um and the carry trade really just kind of playing out you've got some small areas of demand right here if you do want to wait for pullbacks but i do think overall we hit these levels are still quite expensive right very expensive levels i'd rather wait for prices to come down into this zone here before looking at going long so that's where we are with the uh pound yen i don't think there's reasons to buy the yen just yet until um i think central banks really start cutting and entering into their cutting cycle so although the, the yen is hiking rates um uh, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference to the carry trade idea and traders really trying to get as much yield as they can before uh, central banks start to uh, cut rates. Um, looking at the euro dollar, so euro dollar, um, 
again still in this trade from last week and there's a bit of a recap uh, i entered on the 11 hour time frame it was this candlestick right here right there uh i can't remember where the stop was i think it might have been somewhere around 15 16 pips maybe 20 pips and end end up getting a a nice uh one-to-one -one trade so it was actually yeah maybe it was there that was it a nice one-to-one -one trade on that one uh took 50 percent off and then prices actually came down further uh but then started to reverse uh so at the moment i'm in a smaller profit right but if we do see some positive news for the dollar then hopefully we should want to continue to the, to the downside now this is where i'm looking to take some profit or the rest of the profit anyway off because <clears throat> looking at the uh the euro the euro has actually had some really decent news uh, recently um in terms of their economy so euro private area sector business activity reaches its highest level in a year suggesting the region's economic rebound is taking hold so this looks as good as it could be says cyrus de la rubia chief economist at hamburg commercial bank the eurozone's economy is gathering further strength encouraging the new orders are growing at a healthy rate while companies confidence is reflected by a steady hiring pace and it says here just 60 basis points of cuts are now priced this year, equivalent to two quarter point cuts and a 40% 40 40 chance of a third. Three were virtually fully priced as recently as last week. So the reduction in the potential uh, rate of cuts or number of cuts um, is supporting the euro. And the, the better the data, the better the economic data and inflation data is, or the stickier inflation data is, then it yeah, should support the um the euro also as well the euro um will just rise uh, as it's kind of works inverse to the dollar um so if you do have even some weaker dollar news then um of course that's just going to affect the euro to the upside so the worst that could happen is that basically this trade now and actually i've traded my stock down uh to i think it was above a daily yeah it was around here I think I've just trailed my stop down there now because we've made lower high and lower low on the daily. So that's low, high, low. So my stop now is just above here. So now I really can't lose uh, from this. It might be if it if it does stop me out, it will be a small smaller win. But of course, if it moves to the downside, then I can uh, take the rest of those profits. But if you are entering into new trades then um i would say if you're looking for a short trade you have to, you'd have to really wait for prices to pull back to this level or maybe just above it to look for a short trade if you're looking for long trades on the euro against dollar a bit more of a pullback into that demand zone i think that's a nice area to look for uh, start to look for some long trades uh, around the 0. Uh, sorry 1.078 down to the 1.075 so those are the two areas or if prices do make a higher high then this becomes a demand zone right there and then you can look for a buy trade actually in this area here before you know around the 1.082s before looking at going long euro yen again uh, the yen just really being a funding currency and so you've got higher highs being made wider area of demand so i would look for really a pullback towards the bottom end of this demand zone if i was looking for to be a buyer um if you're looking to be a seller again i think there might there may be some short-term weakness with the euro because pretty much june is when they're looking to cut rates right so you may start to see um you know this the, the euro start to weaken as we head into june um against the uh, the yen but ultimately if the european central bank uh, uh a hawkish um a hawkish cut and I'll, I'll release a video probably later on this week from a session we had um in the private mentoring group where i explain what a hawkish cut is um if, if it does come out uh, that that they do have a hawkish cut then um in fact any pullbacks on this pair is likely to be a bit more of a buy rather than a sell regardless of whether they they cut um in june euro pound so euro pound zooming out a bit we've had this uh 
this demand zone. Uh, I want to probably destroy it to around here, eighty percent of that range. Um, I do think that the pound should be the stronger out of the two in the short term. Um, but there is again the opportunity to go long if you wanted to go long on this pair. Going long on this pair would mean that you'd uh, again there'd have to be more of a hawkish cut. But I do think the path of these resistance is still to the downside for the pound. Of course, with um, the politics and the election going on, you could get some weakness on the pound in the short term as we head into July. So there is the chance of prices moving to the upside. If I am going long, if I do decide to go long um then i would really wait for more of a stop hunt first before going long on this currency pair but both um uh, currencies out of both currencies the euro should be the weaker of the two at least over the next uh, couple of weeks but if you want to be obviously if you want to be a buyer of the of the uh or if you want to be a buyer of the pound against the euro, you need to wait for some sort of pullback. And the nearest pullback at the moment in terms of a supply zone is going to be all the way up here. So unfortunately there's nothing technically to look towards in terms of uh in terms of zones. So not necessarily the best pair in terms of a short trade technicals. Uh looking at the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar. Again, not really a pair that I'm looking towards. Uh, this this week is definitely going to be pivotal for both the Australian dollar and the US dollar with uh, inflation uh, figures coming out. So again, depending on what happens, uh, you could either be a buyer or a seller, right? Um, but if you are to be a seller and a shorter of the US dollar, um, sorry, of the Australian dollar, then you're looking at a pullback into the this supply zone if you're looking to be a buyer of the australian dollar you could look to position yourself now or maybe a bit more of a pullback before going uh before going long so you've got that there and that there right so that's really where you are in terms of the australian dollar us dollar but not looking to take this unless there is some uh major news for either um either uh, central banks in terms of inflation so uh, gold we've got gold as well and gold pulling back a bit as it should right because ultimately we've just had higher highs higher lows and made a massive run pull back and then another run and now we're coming back into you know value areas right um, nothing goes up forever so uh, looking at gold gold and silver channel uh it says here that money managers became the most bullish on gold in more than four years as prices surged to a fresh record earlier this week and uh hedge funds and other large speculators boosted their net long positions in comex futures and options by twenty one thousand and thirty contracts in the week through may 21st according to u.s government data that's the highest since mid-april 2020 investors so 2020 was would be you know higher covid really uh, investors have been cashing in after Monday's record with precious metals heading for its worst week this year. Still, bullion is up 13% this year on the back of central bank purchases, robust demand in Asia and conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East that underscore its haven status. So um, hedge funds boost bullish wages in gold to four year high. So that's where we are. So ultimately, if uh, hedge funds and uh, the uh, you know their their net long, any pullbacks really should be seen as a buying opportunity. I think if you're looking at you know lower higher lows and higher highs, and this being the uh, the high of the uh, the range right new high there, and this is the move that caused prices to move to the high, then ultimately I'd want to be a buyer somewhere around this twenty three. Uh, round number uh, 22. Of course, you can look for some trades around now, but I would rather look for just a bit more of a buy around these round numbers as well. So 23, uh, 2300 would be quite nice for a potential buy. So, yeah, looking at that. And again, as we head into uh, rate cuts eventually, you know, from central banks, that should also as well support uh, gold going forward as the dollar 
and other central banks start to devalue their currency. So gold is looking good now. Again, like I said, it's really about understanding where it's just the timing of things, right? Do you want to be a do you want to be a buyer of gold, you know, right now? Do you want to wait for prices to move down a bit more? Um but yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a long-term buyer of gold. So uh, I'm looking for bargain prices. Who wants to buy at these highs? No one. Well, you shouldn't want to buy at highs. You should want to buy low. So we're heading down into this low here. So I think anywhere around from now to these lows should be decent for a long trade. And you know that you have um, the fact that um, uh, institutions are buying as well. And I think the deeper it comes, cheaper it becomes right anyways guys that's it for this week i hope you have a great trading week and uh i wish you all the best and speak to you all soon take care